Hey guys, Mr. Cheebs here. In Blender 2.82, the smoke simulation engine was replaced with the new Mantaflow integration, so I'd wager it's time for a remake of my old particle explosion tutorial. This is what we will be creating, let's hop into it. The process for creating this animation is as follows. First, we create an emitter object and give it a particle system. We then configure those particles to look like an explosion, and then we'll make those particles emit smoke for our final simulation. Drag over everything to select it all and delete all the stuff so we have a clean scene. Hit Shift A and add in an Igosphere. We're going to tab into edit mode and press 1 on the number pad to snap to a flat view of this Igosphere. Now we'll go into wireframe mode, drag over the bottom half of the sphere, and delete those vertices. The reason for having this half an icosphere here is for our particle emission, and we only want half of it so that the particles will be emitted up and we can configure that easier. So let's go to the particle settings for this icosphere, and we'll hit the plus for a new particle system. If we play back this animation we can see our particles, but they aren't being emitted like an explosion. We can use the frame start and end values to define when these particles are generated, so I'll set those to 5 and 6 respectively to have all the particles appear instantaneously between those frames. Now what we need is some velocity. I wonder what menu would be used for that. The normal value under here will push the particles in the direction of our icosphere's normals, or to put it more simply, the direction its faces are facing. Tangent will emit the particles parallel to the icosphere's faces. If I decrease the scale of these particles and get close to the icosphere, we can see that the particles start by sliding along the faces before being shot out. On a curved object like this, we get a similar effect to using the normal value, but we can see this in action a lot better on a flat surface. The tangent phase just rotates the tangent a bit. I'll show this on the single-faced plane so it's easier to see. The object-aligned x, y, and z values are used to expel the particles along those respective axes. The object velocity value is how much velocity the particles inherit from the emitter object, provided that the emitter is moving. And that last slider, randomize, does exactly what its name would imply, randomizing all the velocity. So for an explosion, we want to increase the normal velocity to get some force. I'll set this at about 10 meters per second. We also want to give this a bit of randomization to break up this uniform distribution, so I'll set that at 2. And to make this go further up, we'll increase the object aligned Z to about 10 meters per second. If you find that your particles aren't sticking around long enough, you can increase the lifetime value. This defines how many frames the particles live for. And you can also increase the lifetime randomness to make the death of these particles less uniform. Our particles still aren't looking random enough, but we've done about all we can with our velocity settings. What we could do now is go down to the textures menu and add in a new texture. We're going to use this texture to find what particles get some velocity so it's a bit more variable. Now that we've added that in, let's go to the textures tab and switch the type of texture to generate it to clouds. Let's also increase the size of these clouds to something like 0.75. We don't need much detail for this, so let's decrease the depth to 1. Now we can open up the Influence menu and toggle Physics Velocity and decrease the influence just a little so it's not impacting our velocity so much. We do need something for our particles to collide with, so let's add in a plane. We can scale it up, go to the Physics settings, and toggle on Collision. Increase the stickiness here to about 2.5, this way the particles won't really bounce. Now just make any final tweaks you want and increase the number of particles. I used 100,000, but you may want to do less based on the speed of your computer. Then open up that cache dropdown and bake your simulation. The next step in this process will be to convert these particles to smoke. Mantaflow simulations are created with an emitter and a domain object. We will use the icosphere as the emitter, and the smoke will be created from our icosphere's particles. With Mantaflow, both liquid and smoke simulations use the fluid physics type, so let's enable that for our icosphere. We want to set this as a flow object so that it can introduce smoke to our simulation. 
We also want to change the flow behavior to inflow rather than geometry. The reason behind this is because inflow will add smoke into the scene based on the flow source, while geometry will use the pre-existing mesh as already created smoke. Change the flow type to fire plus smoke so that we can generate both of those and open up the flow source dropdown. Let's switch that from mesh to particle system and select the particles we created in the previous step in this field right here. If you have fast moving particles, you may need to increase the sampling substeps a bit to calculate added smoke in between frames. Now that we've done that, we need a domain to define some more settings and the bounds of our simulation, so let's add in a cube for that. Our domain needs to encapsulate the area we want the simulation to take place in, so I'll scale it up to fit all of my particles. Keep in mind that the smoke will rise, so you'll likely want this to be somewhat tall as well. To see what's inside of the domain, we want to go to the Object Data tab and change its viewport display to Wire. Let's enable Fluid on our domain and set it as a domain object. The type is already set to Gas, which is what we want as we are creating a smoke simulation. There are a few settings we want to change real quick. First, let's toggle on Adaptive Domain to have the cube resize to fit the simulation on any given frame. Let's also open up the Cast dropdown and change the frame start and end values. We know that the particles are created between frame 5 and 6, so we can set the start to frame 5. But I'm going to set the end to the end of my animation timeline, as our smoke is going to stick around far longer than our particles. To play this simulation back in the viewport without caching it, we can change the cache type from modular to replay. We'll have to switch this back to calculate and bake our simulation out later. Playing this back in the viewport, it really doesn't look good because our simulation resolution is set super low. But we can figure out how the simulation is going to look and make quick changes without baking everything using this method. You always want to figure out how your simulation will look on a low resolution before you increase the quality and wait 5 hours for it to bake out. Once I've seen this simulation a couple of times, I can fix the few errors that I might have, such as the smoke colliding with the domain up here. Once I've done little tweaks such as that, I'll crank up the resolution of the simulation, switch the cache type back to modular, and hit the Bake Data button. When you have your base simulation, you can actually go bake noise on top of that to add an extra layer of detail. Toggle on noise and you'll see your simulation disappear. This occurs if the noise is not baked, so make sure to leave that off if you don't want or need the higher detail. The up res factor is how much resolution will be added. 2 is fine for our purposes. Wavelet is the only noise method at this point. The rest of these values can be left at their defaults as well, and it will work just fine. Now that we've baked out our noise, we can do some materials. Those are actually going to be pretty simple. Drop down a principled volume node and connect that to the volume on the material output. Add in a volume info node and connect that temperature to the emission strength. Then just choose a good color and you get the flames. I'm going to render this animation in cycles as it gives way better results for smoke than Eevee. Nonetheless, I'm going to show you a few small things that you can do to get your volumes to render way faster. If you go down to the volumes dropdown in our cycle settings, we can see these two values. The higher the step size, the faster the render will be, and the lower the max steps, the faster the render will be as well. This makes a huge difference for render speed, and you actually don't need to crank these for quality most of the time. I rendered this animation right here with a step size of 1 and a max steps value of 50, and it looks completely fine. So, go ahead, press Ctrl F12, and render out your smoke simulation. If you want to see a more technical breakdown of Mantaflow smoke sims, then leave a like on this video and comment so I can see if that's a tutorial you guys would like me to make. I want to thank you all for watching, and have a wonderful day.